back to our channel. Hear me out. I'm Dee. I'm E. And today we're going to be giving you the recap of Kardashian Season 3, Episode 6. Mm -hmm. Barely, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, you don't sound too I'm, excited. I'm not. I'll be honest with you. I'm mm. not. I think uh, we're in agreement. It was a filler episode. Yeah. So you know how we were like saying we were fatigued during our last recap? I don't even know what to call it at this point. <laughs> we're annoyed. But we mm -hmm. can't wait till this crap is over at this point. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But and you know, we're fully invested at this point. So you know what? We're taking it. We 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 acknowledge as we did last time, we did this to ourselves. So there's no going back. What did we see on this latest episode? All right. So if you guys have watched our other videos, we divide things into sections. This episode, episode six, was called The Tension is Brewing. And let me say the tension is brewing because I am so annoyed. <laughs> it's brewing between me and the Kardashians, the Jenners. Oh. Crickly. I don't know whoever's related to them. Travis Scott, Travis Barker, Tristan Thompson, Scott Chris Dishon. Humphreys, wherever he's at, Kanye, yeah. everybody. Everyone. Everybody's on that list. The kids, they're not included, but they might be. I don't know how I feel by the end of this Cole episode. Gamble, since we never, ever mention him. You, Corey. You know you what? He, he probably, he's doing good because he's steering clear of this nonsense. But Corey's yeah. in there too. Yes. Yeah. At this point, our tension is brewing. So this episode was basically crap, but we're going to go through it. <laughs> this is my opinion, you know, hear me out. All right. So section one, it felt very uh, keeping up. I don't know why I was annoyed, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> um, this is Kim taking her driver's license picture and she brought Chris and Ariel to do her hair and makeup. I can tell you're already annoyed. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> this is, you know, before Kim's 42-year-old uh, birthday. I guess you needed to, uh, to get a renewal there. They took two pictures, you know. She, I, I don't even know what to say because I keep looking at your face and you're so annoyed. So for those who didn't know, <laughs> Kimberly, is five, three and a half, and there's a whole discussion of how tall is she, and should she add West to the name? And they're like, no, we should not. Um, but the interesting, I guess, little snippet was, you know, where she's kind of subtly dissing Courtney, and she's saying, um, you know, the first is the worst, and the second is the best. You know, she took two pictures, and then she says, that's why uh, Courtney is second, and I'm not basically the best no, kind of thing. You said that's why I was born second. Oh, that's why oh. I was born second. You, mm -hmm. you're the tomato, tomato. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of things about the Kardashians <laughs> that are, are not relatable. And we have all grown to just, okay, cool. No problem. That's fine. You know, who shakes their salad the way they do so much? But whatever. A lot of unrelatable things. But this, to me, felt <laughs> like a slap in the face. Really? On a whole, Do you know what it's like to go to the DMV? I mean, oh, oh, of course. The last couple times I've done it online, thank you, God, we can do that. But making it a really feel. Oh, I'm about to. <laughs> because making an appointment at DMV, A, is difficult. B, a headache when you're there. There's always tons of people. Mm -hmm. The people at the DMV are usually not wanting to be at the DMV. Like, I mean, the workers themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't recall ever getting a chance to take a second picture. And this is true. nor did I ever have a chance to take a whole glam squad on an empty uh, <laughs> DMV to allow me. Oh, and then allows me to go behind the counter to look at my pictures and decide which one's the best. And hair and makeup, of course. What in the F? Anyway, 
I'm going to stop. Should we end the episode here? Because I don't know if you can survive the rest of this. (laughs) At this point. I I thought it was kind of comical. I I don't know. Maybe it's just the celebrity of it all. I I mean, I I don't know what other celebrities do at this point. Maybe they get private appointments and this is the first time we see something like this. Um, but I don't know why I thought this was funny to me. She was in Chancletas. I don't know. That's the most relatable thing that I saw in that whole clip. I right. think they were probably Old Navy flip-flops. The picture was literally from here up. That's the only reason. Aside from that, she probably would have gone with a whole ensemble. Like, anyhow. Well, these pictures last for five to ten years. How often this do is you look at your driver's license picture? I look at it all the time. You know, the vanity is real. I'll be like, oh, I need a new picture. I put it in my wallet and I never look at it again until I have to bring it out. And even then, I bring it out super quick and put it back in. Anyway. This is where yeah. you don't relate to Kimberly and I do. I, if I uh-huh. could, I would. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says about me. If I could, I would. Glam squad, maybe not because I'm a kind of shy, but... Can we retake that picture two, three, four, five times? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but what did you think about her dissing Courtney? I mean, it just, it comes off as so petty at this point. It's like, you know you're being recorded. You know that your sister's going to see this. Not only her, but like the rest of the freaking you know, fandom that watches the show. It feels very like, I don't know, just childish and we've talked about that both of them mm-hmm. are just acting like child so like a child i don't know i don't know i thought at this point i think that the this fight is fabricated i'm like i don't even like i can't get the vibe are they really pissed or are they just pretending at this point like i, yeah. I don't know yeah I don't it feels weird like especially because they keep not talking to each other but i know we're gonna get to that in the next section so all right so section two uh chloe's at court is at court's house simon is there and they're they're calling this the tension is brewing i don't know they should have called this episode this is stupid but Mm -hmm. um chloe tells courtney that she needs to talk to kim courtney says that kim has not reached out to solve anything uh there's no sense of loyalty and there's a whole bunch of greediness and she saw the fashion show and like every look or every other look, she was like, is this my wedding? I don't know why this is such a big deal, but whatever. Uh, Courtney says she didn't feel supported and where's the common decency? Says Kim uh, did not ask her how she would feel doing something like this uh, so close to her wedding. And what else can Kim take away from her? The Can she have anything that's hers? Uh, hmm. Courtney stresses that she needs her own identity and her own life and needs separation. You know, she needs her own family. She needs her own friends or whatever. And Kim is always up and down with her mood. I 1000% agree that she needs separation. Uh, 1000. Like, <laughs> she needs to move to Mars. That's what she needs. Leave point. the show, ma'am. Leave it. And I'm not saying it to be mean, to be ugly. I'm just saying, clearly, this is not good for your mental health. Like, or ours at this point. Girl, we're not talking about us right now. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) The tension is brewing. The tension is brewing, okay? Yeah, we're about to get into a beef just, you know, to make it fun. I mean, it's just, I understood, you know, a lot of what she said. and, And we talked about that. There's a lot of times where she's made some sense. Her saying she needs her own family. I agree. Again, do that. You know, have your family. That should be your priority. This back and forth, you know, non-speaking situation, non-beef, really with Kim just feels like it's, like you said, it's forced at this point. And it's like, she's telling Chloe, well, you know, I could just, if we just talked about, I'd just let it go right away. And it's like, why don't you do that? Exactly. Wouldn't that be like the best thing for your mental health right now? Yeah, let's have this discussion. Okay, cool. I'm done. I'm over it. I don't know. That seems like the perfect scenario. And mm-hmm. if Kim is moody or whatever you want to call it, like, okay, fine. Who cares? Do your part. Know that you did what you should have done 
And if she can't get with the program or you can't come to like a mutual place, then separate. Again, like you keep saying, you want to do. I feel like so many of these things are very simple and they're complicating them to drag this out for the whole season. I know. This could have been over three episodes ago. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think I can understand Courtney's frustration in a little bit just because I feel, and especially later on in the episode, we see this was such a Kim-centric episode and this has been such a Kim-centric season. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know, for the last 20 years, it's Kim, the Kardashians, the rest of them, the Jenners, you know, she's always the star, the main one that everybody's talking about. Yeah. You know, so I could I could see her feeling some kind of way because, you know, maybe Kim is outshining everybody or Kim is always the center of attention. Right. But, you know, at the same time, Courtney needs to find, I guess, her new niche, like her little area within yeah. her family. Right. And if she doesn't like this toxic environment because we've seen this throughout these Kardashian episodes. And even in keeping up, like she always wants to leave. She always says, my family's not good for my mental health. I don't want to hang out with people that don't support me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So why are we still in this show? Yeah. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. And and she's not trying to find like a resolution, I feel, to be better. No. Like she has mentioned she has a therapist she goes to therapy i promise you her therapist told her a long time ago girl get away like set boundaries and stick to those boundaries like hello it it doesn't make sense why are you going to therapy you're not following your therapist's advice because very clearly this is what you need to be doing and you're here telling everybody else and their mother oh well my therapist said this my therapist said that and i need to do this and that for my mental health but then you're not doing it. And then you're also not talking to the person that's causing you some of, you know, some of the distress you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It all just feels very much like me, 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 me. Let me stay in this because at least I get some kind of, you know, attention this way. And and that is that what you're trying to do? Are you trying to get attention? Is this your way of trying to get attention? Oh, well, this could be. I mean, but also there wasn't a problem when everybody was ganging up on Kim, you know, going back where, you know, you can dish it, you can take it. You know, she's probably upset that she's not as close to uh, Chloe. We we seen this, especially this episode, that she's not as close to Chloe as she used to be. And they used to gang up on Kim, you know, so everything was, she never complained prior to that about her mental health and blah, blah, blah. Right. That, so then what happened? Yeah, you know, and that's, I think that's something that they haven't really, like, you know, fully touched on. And I feel that would make a lot more sense to discuss, really, because it's like, you know, there's so many episodes of them laughing at Kim. Kim is crying, Kim is upset, and they're laughing at her. They're making fun of her. And, you know, was Kim ridiculous at times? Of course. You know, Kim is the extra one. But there were so many times where their aggression, not passive, like full on aggression, were very, like, very nasty. And they weren't. Chloe included. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chloe, we know Chloe has ever. Yes. All of them. It was, it was literally like, an, you know, all of the siblings, all the Kardashian siblings ganging up on her. And so that to me was like part of the, the thing that I didn't understand. It's like, why is it okay that you guys did all this stuff but then now you can't handle it when it's like being done to you and i'm not saying it should be done to you i'm not saying you know quid pro quo none of that but i mean come on have a little bit of like what's what's that word like when you're aware of like you did this so maybe i shouldn't you know kind of do certain things as well like i don't know it just i'm telling you it all just feels so frustrating and annoying at this point like yeah yeah i don't i don't know what what's up with her but then you know just to beat a dead horse (laughs) she's profiting off of kim right now yeah so you know she always focuses on you know i want to be a good mom i want to be basically Mm -hmm. kind of like a stay-at-home person which is great that's fine it's her mood 
um you know she has this let me thing she has she needs this kardashian show yeah to be i don't want to call her relevant but you know to yeah. have some spotlight and right. who's the spot who's the person that's in the spotlight kim so you kind of need her for yeah. you to prosper and get those paychecks so which one so what is it like are you willing to sacrifice this money too right and that's what I'm like thinking too. It's like you not have enough to go ahead and separate yourself from this. I would think, you know, that you would. You're married now, you know, so obviously you have your husband to to help out if need be. Um, but yeah, I know that like no matter what, you know, there's definitely um profiting coming from all of that. I mean, she sends her PR boxes to Kim. Kim promotes her PR boxes. So mm -hmm. what does that do? It makes people go and, and look into her stuff. And, you know, all of this is, is all related. And it's like, I think maybe what could be angering her is that she can't fully extricate herself from Kim. I don't know. Maybe that could be like a part of it that she wants to separate from her. But maybe knowing that she really can't might be the more frustrating aspect. Maybe. Whatever it is, it's just confusing me. Her vibes <laughs> are confusing yeah. me. I don't know. If you really want to stay, I don't know if you're using, you know, I don't mean to say this like this, but it, it's going to come out this way. Mental health as a clutch, like, oh, it's my mental health, blah, blah, blah. You're not, you know, interested in money. You don't care about those things, but everything you're doing says otherwise. Why do yeah. you care so much about this Dolce & Gabbana thing and your wedding vibes? You know, yeah. we're talking luxury stuff. Yeah. Why do you care about starting a business? the Lemmy vitamins and the competition. Yep. You keep bringing up this competition. You're the only one competing because I don't think Kim has mentioned it once. Ooh, yeah. I'm you just saying. You have a point. I digress. All right, <laughs> section three. She's just a confusing individual and I'm trying to understand her because sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm in a Courtney, pick on her, pick on her, pick on her. She's annoying me. Mm -hmm. But she's just confusing me as an individual and I would never be yeah. her friend. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Section three. Uh, Chloe is planning a birthday party for Kim in Vegas. You know, they're going to go see an Usher concert and she's planning it with Steph and Tracy. Um, you know, then Chloe ends up planning a birthday dinner. They try to, you know, they fly out. There's some turbulence. They have to come back. So they, um obviously can't go to the concert then they stop by in and out just to you know eat a yeah. couple burgers um and i think that's basically it for this little section oh yeah well um it looks beautiful the dinner that chloe you know planned it was nice i was surprised to see courtney there um see what i mean like i don't understand of course she has to support her sister so which one is it if you're so yeah. mad i wouldn't even show up mm -hmm. right that yeah that's why i was confused like wait what but oh my god okay <laughs> Chris Jenner. Unpack, girl. unpack it oh, i thought look okay we just finished <laughs> ranting about courtney but I felt bad for her at that dinner. Like, so bad for her. I did. Because what Chris was saying, oh my God. Listen, we know you have favorites. We know that. But we shouldn't know that. Like, we should not know that. And and for you to say these things so publicly in front of Courtney. I mean, you know, and Chloe, you know the tension is brewing. Maybe this was a good title for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was messed up when she said, you're the leader of our family. I'm like, what? Like, who dubbed thee the leader of thy Listen, family? You And you and I have mentioned it. Chris, uh, Kim will be the Chris of the family. We know that. For sure. But, but at the same time, Courtney's still the oldest daughter. You know, and I think it's kind of wrong to cast her aside, you know, kind of like she's what Kim's got to be Kim's follower. Now, that's not fair either. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that parents should really like try and, and, and so publicly say, you know, favoritism stuff. 
because that's all it was. And she gave the world's longest speech <sighs> just about the greatness of Kimberly. And, you know, we, that was a little we, awkward. Yeah. And maybe it could have been edited to look that way, but still, it was just kind of like Chloe had to kind of speed her up and shut her up. Like, you know. So, and then even she said she had to keep looking over at Courtney, see how she was doing. And I would hate to be that sister, you know, to like have to, it's not my problem, but here I am having to like moderate, you know, and mm-hmm. that's not fair either. So anyway, I was so, so annoyed with Chris for that. Like Courtney has her issues and faults and obviously we've ranted about her a lot, but nobody deserves that, bro. Like that was just. And why is Courtney on the other side of the table? Because attention is brewing. Right. right. See, this was a good title. You know what? I'm going to give it to you, Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, just the way that, um, you know, she looked at Travis like, did this girl try me? This girl being her mom. Her mother. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and girl yeah. meaning another curse word that I'm not going to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was, mm, that kind of hurt me a little bit. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Now the whole like you know, uh, going to the Usher concert and everything. We saw the the social media stories about that and everything. So you know there wasn't really like, I don't know, there really wasn't much that was all that interesting. Um, that whole little portion though about the turbulence and then Chris saying she's a flight attendant and oh but you know she, this this worried her and I was just kind of like. Okay. Sure. I don't know. I think I was just finding it hard to believe anything she was saying at that point. I was just like, okay. Maybe I was just still annoyed with her over the dinner. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but I you know, I thought it was nice that her friends were trying to throw uh trying to throw Kim this yeah. this thing. I'm like, you know what? Y'all need to throw me a party somehow. <laughs> I'm just saying I need a party buzz. Take me out to see Usher. I think that is such a great birthday present for me. It really is. I, I, I'm just letting you know so you could coordinate. You're Ma'am. Chloe. I'm Kim right now. <laughs> you don't like surprises like that. Yeah, I don't. You don't like to not be in control of things. So I That's tell you, hey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, let's, let's keep it moving. <laughs> All right, section four. Uh, Chris is at Kim's house, and they're just basically having a discussion that Kim is turning 42. Chris was saying that she had a baby at 41, so she basically had, you know, six kids by uh, at this point, and she was a stay-at-home mom. Um, and then Chris, this was kind of cringy. So Chris is talking about having this amazing life, yeah. but it could be a curse. Oh, my gosh, it's a curse. You know, things can be really negative. You can get blamed for everything. And an example they provided was Chloe is responsible for Tristan cheating or losing a basketball game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kim, you know, she seemed like a little martyr in this episode. She's like, God mm-hmm. makes no mistakes, which God does not make any mistakes. Right. Um, and, you know, she got into this like holy grail kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then Chris recalls the Kim uh, Paris incident. And how Kim was glad that it was her and not her sisters because, you know, that would have messed them up for life. Mm. Had to crack. I had to stretch. Mm. Mm. Um, What do you think? That's two episodes in a row they're bringing up the Paris robbery. I don't know why. Last time? Yeah, during the Dolce. Wasn't the Dolce episode last time? Oh, because of the necklace. Necklace, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Like, I don't know. It, it felt kind of weird for her to bring that up. And and I just wondered, does she ever get this sentimental about Courtney's birthday? Like, do you ever, you know, feel like, oh, my gosh, my daughter, she's been through so much. She's so rich. She has. She totally has. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, like you know, do you go to her house and cry at her altar? Like, you know, (laughs) she literally, to me, is like deifying uh, Kim. Yeah. Like idolizing her. 
Yes, like beyond <laughs> anything we've seen in any previous episodes, seasons, shows, whatever. Mm-hmm. This feels really cringy to me. And it, and then also, like I said earlier, the rest of the family is going to watch these episodes. So how is Courtney going to feel that here you are, you know, probably like not giving giving uh, uh, Kim the speech that she probably never gave Courtney? You know, it's like, mind you, we don't know. Maybe she did. But again, this is what's televised. Her basically praising Kim from here to Sunday, like there's, you know, I mean, she's like it. Like, there is nothing better. And, and that's, that's horrible. You have, what, six kids? What are you doing? You know, like. <laughs> no, to, to defend Chris, it seemed like she was genuinely like very happy, very speechy when uh, Courtney was getting married or got engaged to Trev. You know, they had like that reunion afterwards or whatever, like that little get together. And she was just rambling about, you know, my firstborn. She's getting, you know, blah, 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 blah. She She wasn't praising her because she was getting married. She wasn't praising her because, oh, she's such a strong woman and this, this and that, like she does Kim. She was literally praising her for the one thing that like she's done already twice. Her other daughters have done multiple times. Oh, okay. You want to praise her for something like that? Not for the fact that she endured years of Scott Disick and then endured more years of you and Kim trying to, like, push her back into Scott's arms? I'm sorry. That was rude. Hi, Eldris. Is this how I sound when I'm upset? I love this. <laughs> I love this for us. The switch. I hate you. No, I mean... You, you make good like, points. That is what you are literally sitting here and crying mm-hmm. about. Oh, thank God you're getting married. Like what? Like it was the end of the world. But it was like life. happiness. You know, you're happy. You found someone to share your life with. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, let me let me give her a little a little grace. You know, go ahead. You give her all the grace you want. I give her none. Mm-mm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know why they were bringing up this Paris episode thing. I think it's because yeah. they're trying to stretch this for so long. Like, yeah. it's just now they're just throwing stuff at it, you know, at this Real point. quick, though, hold on. I just thought of something. Are are they trying to, like, portray Kim as this big-time survivor or something in comparison to Courtney's victimhood? Like... Mm. it feels really weird that they brought it up twice back to back when they had not talked about it for a while um i understand kim bringing it up when she received the gift and all that you know from dolce gabbana but this was a little like wait why are you talking about this and then of course it's like i think even in the speech she said you're the strongest woman i know like you're the most resilient mother i know like all these different things and it's like your other daughters including chloe who just went through a cancer scare they've been through a lot man Mm-hmm. Like, Chloe literally had to halt her divorce to save her husband who was found at a brothel overdosed. <laughs> you, like, I don't, I don't, I'm confused. You know, like, uh, again, everything Courtney endured, and here you are making it seem like the ultimate survivor is him. Yeah. But I have yet to see her talk to Courtney about any of this Dolce stuff. Oh boy. Very interesting. The tension is brewing, guys. The tension <laughs> is brewing. <laughs> Can you feel it? Please. All right, section five. Um uh, oh, I guess we were kind of talking about it. It was uh Chloe hosting the dinner at Kim's office. Everybody was there. You know, she knew that she was going to Vegas. Uh let's see what else. Oh, Chris gives a toast. We we talked about that. And then Courtney says, I'm like, uh, that Kim could be the leader of the family if she wants, but it's not a cult that she's following. And that's exactly what Chris is making her seem to be. She's deifying her. Like, I'm sorry, that's blasphemous. What are you doing? Kim is not a god. Kim is not a saint. She's not Mother Teresa. Like, why are we out here, like, needing to bow down? 
to this other human. I mean, I have to agree with Courtney. Like, I don't want none of that cold. I'm not drinking that Kool Aid. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, how? What can I say after that? I'm not drinking <laughs> the Kool Aid either. <laughs> <laughs> all right and i guess we we kind of talked about this too this is how uneventful the story was it was really? just basically a surprise going to see usher they couldn't in an outrun so we kind of covered it all yeah because that's how uneventful this what did you think about them being at in and out though <laughs> i can't is it gonna be three hundred dollars three hundred is that what you need please I can't. I cannot. Remember the time we got in and out when we went to <laughs> LA? Yeah. And also, um, yeah, sorry, not sorry, but it wasn't that great. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I'm a Shake Shack person. Not a Shake Shack, a Five Guys kind of person. I'm a water okay. brother kind of person. I live in Texas, y'all. Sorry. MIA. Not sorry. <laughs> Well then, that yeah. I I don't know. Um, so it seems like next episode Kim is crying because her divorce is finalized with Kanye. Mm -hmm. So we'll see something about that. I don't know if the tension is still going to be brewing at this point. I don't know if they're gonna have a conversation. Uh, Kylie and Kendall, they are no shows again because you know they're just plugs. At they this were point. at the dinner. And that's it. Well, they were. You know, there was like a chest bump. Right, right. Um, we saw Kendall looking at Kim or Chris. Right. That's the role they played. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to I be paid just to look and yeah. chest bump. Sure. Attend nice fancy dinners. Yeah, so I don't think next, uh, next episode is going to be eventful either. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry that I got to watch this. Yeah. At I'm this sorry point. For us. I bet they're just building it up so much that it's going to be like such a dumb conversation with right. an easy resolve. Like in 10 yeah. minutes, let's hug it out. My bad. We're family. Ooh, proud family. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of the proud family right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is all, guys. Let us know what you thought about this episode. Did it yeah. suck? Yes, it did. I'm just letting you know what to oh. write in the comments. This episode sucked. Um, <laughs> all right. You were way harsher than I was in this episode. <laughs> like, I know, but I was just really like annoyed. I could tell. <laughs> you spoke for the both of us, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, please subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Let us know what your thoughts were. Uh, we see you watching. Please subscribe. Yeah. We're looking at the analytics. Yeah. Uh, that wraps up today's video. Until next time. Peace. Bye, guys.